Hello, everyone, and welcome to the holding period return video here at the Boston Institute of Finance. Uh, now, every single exam cycle, holding period return is probably one of my most requested uh, topics for help with from students. Um, they're always coming to my office hours, sending me emails, just asking for help with holding period return. Uh, which is kind of surprising just because holding period return is probably the easiest formula that you'll run into on the CFP exam formula sheet. So I wanted to put this video together to show you guys that it is not that scary. Um, you know, just with a little bit of uh, work, you can get these answers uh, real quick. And if you get a holding period return question on your exam, uh, you'll be jumping for joy because of just how easy this is. So with that, let's just dive right in and do some example questions together uh, and just work through it together. So at its core, holding period return is just profit divided by cost. That is all it is. At, it, at its most basic, all you have to worry about is profit divided by cost. Where it gets a little tricky is figuring out what the profit is and what the cost is. So let's say you have a client and they want to buy XYZ stock and they buy XYZ stock for $50. And then one year later, they end up selling XYZ stock for $100. Let's figure out their holding period return. Well, first of all, what's the profit? Well, they sold it for 100, they bought it for 50. That means their uh, profit was also $50. Now, what was their cost? Well, their cost was just $50. So that makes it nice and easy. We got $50 in profit divided by $50 in cost. That, of course, gives us one which is equal to a 100% holding period return. They doubled their money. Oop. They doubled their money there, not 10%, 100%. Uh, and that's pretty good for, for a one year's investment. Now let's make it a little bit more challenging. So I would call that a level zero holding period return question. Let's do a level one holding period return question. So, in addition to buying it for 50, selling it for 100, let's say that this stock also paid a $5 dividend while they held it. So once again, let's find out what their profit is. Well, they sold it for 100 and they bought it for 50. So 100 minus 50 is 50 plus $5 in dividends means that their profit is now $55 because we got the $50 in profit from the sale plus $5 in dividend profit. Their cost is still the same at 50. So we got 55 divided by 50 to give us a new holding period return of 1.1 which equals 110% holding period return. Still not too bad, right? That's pretty easy. Let's kick it up a notch to a level two holding period return question. Let's say instead of getting a $5 dividend, let's just go back to our basic, bought it for 50, sold it for 100. But our client here didn't pay for uh, the stock outright on their own. Let's say they also purchased XYZ stock on margin. And let's just say for simplicity's sake, we'll keep the numbers similar. Let's say they had a margin rate of 5%. So now let's figure out what their profit and their costs are. So for the profit side, they sold it at 100, and for the costs, this $50 is now really divided into two $25 payments. 
we got $25 that the client paid for out of pocket. And then we got the $25 that the firm let them borrow on margin. So that $100 sale minus the $25 that we have to pay back to the firm minus the $25 that our client put in minus the 5% interest rate for the margin. And that 5% is 5% on what was borrowed which is $25. So 25 times 0.05 comes out to $1.25. So now our cost, or I'm sorry, our profit is our $100 sale price minus $25 that our client put in minus $25 that was borrowed from the firm minus $1.25 that our client has to pay in margin interest means that our profit is now $48.75. And now you might be thinking, well, man, that margin interest is eating away at our profit. Our holding period return is going to end up being lower. But in fact, you would be wrong because our cost has also changed now. Even though we bought the stock for $50, we only paid $25 out of our own pocket because we borrowed the other $25 from the firm. And our cost in holding period return is only our own personal out-of-pocket cost. So in this case, it would only be $25. So we have $48.75 divided by 25 gives us 1.95, which equals 195% holding period return. And this right here really demonstrates the power of margin and why so many people purchase securities on margin because it has a huge multiplying effect on your holding period return and your returns in general. Because in a case like this, where we're only talking about $25, it's not as evident, but let's say that our client uh, only had you know, $25,000 in an account. Well, if they only had $25,000 in account, they can also apply for margin, borrow the other $25,000, and they can make a much larger purchase, which in turn increases the amount of money that they'll make on their trades, assuming, of course, that the trades go in their direction. You know, if the trades go against them, that's another story for another day. But if the trades go in their favor, you know, it can almost pretty much double their rate of return, minus, of course, the little bit that they have to pay in the margin interest. So we went from a 100% return in just our basic uh, you know, $50 profit for buying it outright to 195% return buying it on margin. So that is a level two margin question, or a holding period return question, I should say. Now, let's take it to the next level, level three, the most difficult that it could possibly be. We're going to combine all of this together. So our client still bought XYZ at 50. They still sold it at 100. They still bought it on margin at 5%. But now let's also add in, they got $5 and dividend payments during their holding period. And also let's make it extra, extra tricky. They didn't hold XYZ for a full year. They only held XYZ for six months. So how is that gonna change things? Well, let's go through it. 
So let's first figure out what our profit is. So our profit, we sold it at 100. And we still bought it on margin, right? So it's still broken down into two $25 chunks. So we got minus the $25 that our client put in, minus the $25 that our firm put in, plus $5 in dividend payments. And now for this, um, I will say, be really careful uh, with what the question actually says on the exam and how it's phrased. Now, in my example, I just said that they had a $5 dividends while they were holding it. So, you know, $5 is what they got. So $5 is what we're going to put in. But be careful because maybe the question says that there's a $5 annual dividend that's paid quarterly or paid semi-annually. Well, if we only hold the stock for six months, we're not going to get the $5 annual payment. We're only going to get $2.50. And even then, be very careful if the question gives like specific holding dates, you know, from, you know, they held it from February to July or something like that. Make sure you have to see when the dividends are actually hitting to make sure that the client uh, is actually receiving those dividends. So for this example, we're going to keep it nice and simple. It's just $5 is what they got in dividends. In the actual exam, make sure you are reading the question carefully to see that they are getting that full dividend payment. So we got plus five for the dividends. Now we have 5% for margin. And the 5% margin interest is the annual rate. And we only held it for six months. So $25 times the 5% margin would be an annual amount of $1.25. But since we only hold it, held it for six months, we're going to divide that $1.25 in two in order to get our margin amount, which is 62 and a half cents. So we'll round that up to a margin cost of 63 cents. So now let's plug it all in and calculate what our profit is. We got 100 minus 25 minus 25 plus $5 minus 63 cents gives us a profit of $54.37. And now our cost is once again, just the amount that we invested, which is $25. So we have a cost of $25. So let's say our $54.37 divided by our $25 cost gives us a very nice holding period return of 2.175 which equals a 217.5% holding period return. Not bad for six months of investment. So I hope that clears up holding period return for you. Uh, I hope it shows that it is not that scary, especially you know the level zero and level one uh, holding period return questions where when you're just talking about, you know, basic trades or, you know, maybe even a trade plus a dividend, you know, real straightforward. Uh, it does get a little complicated when you throw margin into the mix. You do have to calculate the margin amount, uh, especially if it's only a partial year, you know, maybe it's only six months or three months. But, you know, like I said, calculate the annual margin rate and then just divide it by your time frame uh, in order to get the um, amount that you're actually going to pay in margin. Hope that clears things up. Definitely feel free to reach out if you have more questions on this and good luck studying.